Hi, this is Lori Jonas, and these are some papers I printed out on my just ink printer of uh, some old music sheets that I found. And I wanted to show you guys some things you can do with it. And so I decided that I would make a tag. It's easy, simple, and I think you'll be able to follow along pretty well. Hopefully you've been able to fall, but follow me. But I'm going to try to make the videos just one or two series and because it seems like people getting lost after the first video. So um, what I'm going to do is I bought some of these brushes like this. Just some, that way I'm not using my art brushes for my Mod Podge. And I'm going to just brush it on the top. Um, well, I should probably take my mat off. I'll be using that later. That's my stamping mat. And so I don't want to cover it up with Mod Podge. But after that, I'm just going to take this. Put it right on top of the, on this. It's one of the musical papers. I found some old, old, old music. I mean, the paper was so brittle as a secondhand store. And if I'm not talking loud enough, I'm sorry because I have a little cold. <laughs> My husband was sick and he shared it with me. Isn't that great? Anyway, I'm going to, if you don't have a cutting machine and you're not, you don't have a tag on hand, I'm going to print this up, copy it, and maybe do three at a time so that you'll have the image. And I already printed the, P, the files right here on Crafting and Friends blog. I should leave it on there. <laughs> oh. Anyway, and so on this side now, I just rub it with my hand so there's no creases, but you can um, take a roller and roll over it so that it's nice and soft. Now I'm going to turn it over and I'm just going to trim it because this will be the back side the solid I love this um it's vanilla cardstock. I just bought a whole pack from American Craft. They had a um, a warehouse sale out here in Utah. And I bought, I don't know, $40 worth of American Craft cardstock. So this is going to be the back Walmart. It was pretty inexpensive. It's really thick though. So using it on scrapbook and acrylic projects it's great but using it on oil painting is not as good because you need something thick and I mean you don't need something thick you just need something wet you know there's a big difference so right now I'm going to take Oh, I'm using the wrong one. Take my gesso and cover this up. And then I'm going to take my sponge and dab it like this. I still want to see the... I want to try to lighten it up, but yet leave a texture. This is just a texture sponge. I got it at... Hobby Lobby. You can use any sponge actually. You don't have to use this. Just cut a little corner off the sponge and 
Ooh, my hair's in there. Oh. The other day I was in church and my son said to me, no, I was at his school and he said, Mom. I'm like, what? And he said, your hair's turning gray. I'm like, thanks, kid. So that way it's a lighter. It's still, you can still see the pattern because I wiped a lot of it off. And if you look at it, you could, I don't know. There is a texture on there from the sponge. Okay, now I'm gonna take my gelato. They're called gelatos from Fiber Castle. They're they're awesome. I love them. They're kind of, but you can get the same effect from um, watercolor crayons, except for it's just not that smooth. Now I'm just gonna go over some of it you know if you're watching me I'm not I'm not using a lot and, and then I'm gonna blend it in with my brush I'm gonna go over it wet a bit so that the edges are darker we want the edges a little darker it's kind of like when you distress something you you want it to be a bit darker i'm trying to think do i want orange do i want let's try orange i have it out now i'm going to take a little orange and just go through it and then i'm going to pat it because i can see that i still want to see the background and I'm just taking this to take some of it off and I have this stamp I got it for um it's a texture stamp you buy it for for putting texture onto clay and it was fairly inexpensive out of business and so I went and bought a lot of stays on because I like to use the stays on because then I'm not worried about it fading over time or anything like this but I have to show you how I do this I do it on a lot of my artwork because <laughs> I love this stamp and if see that it puts a texture on it that's really nice and I know my, my way my style is different <laughs> no <laughs> but anyway and then I love this one it's just lines and again I bought it in the clay section at Hobby Lobby and it's actually my most used stamps I love them both together and it's it's just rubber but look at that you can see the notes gesso on the edges and just going through I I always add I am never ever satisfied <laughs> always adding until until it looks good to me you know I I I create things like this to my satisfaction <laughs> oh some people are like oh my goodness I create things that I like for other people and that gives me satisfaction <laughs> anyway so this gelato is it it's really nice because it leaves a good um, pigment on the paper it's not really watercolor but it's it's nice you could see the colors I like it. Okay, I cut a heart out of that same paper. And I have some Perlex watercolors that I got at Hobby Lobby. And I'm just going to dip this in. And I'm going to color it. But I'm going to try to get the edges a bit darker than the center and it has a beautiful like 
shine to it. I'm trying to blend it in. I don't know if you could see that shine to it. But it's just Perlex watercolors. And I'm gonna I'm gonna just go over it with um my black pen around the edges of the heart. And I'm okay, I changed my mind. I was thinking what I wanted to put on here and a house wasn't it so I print I cut out a square it seems to be what's hot and then traced around it I'm just gonna put a little lady here cut out a little top I have the heart I'm gonna put on top of it and then I'm gonna use this paper once again that I I took out and I'm just gonna cut out a little head Anyway, but I think she didn't put a head on hers. And then that's it. Ta da! You can decorate it as much as you want. And then put the little heart on top of the dress, you know, because she's had some arms. Okay, we have the body, and I'm going to add some flowers on there. There are just some flowers that I punched out. So you could add any flower that you punch out onto the tag. And I'm going to just add Mod Podge to put it on. Make sure I add the Mod Podge. So there's the girl's body, and then I added a neck. And I'm just going to add Mod Podge on the tag. Because I, I want it to be different. I don't want it to look like something somebody else already did. And I don't want her to look like a she girl, you know. <laughs> don't want her to get anybody get mad at me. <laughs> So anyway, so here's the whole body. We did the body and the neck. Then we added a flower there and a flower over to the side. Then we're just going to do it like a triangle and add a, a full flower right over the dress. See? And then I'll trim off the excess. Because I just took that class and then I'm like, wait a minute. I don't think I should be adding a face to this girl. <laughs> okay, I just draw it in the middle, thinking of you. And I think this would be a neat tag to have um, just on something, a gift. You can um, distress the edges. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.